lecture uh, will be presented by Dr. Ayman Ganali Taneri, lecturer of Fixed Prosthodontics Faculty of Dentistry and Champs University, with his colleague uh, Dr. Muhammad Salah, and the dentist with limited practice to microscopic dentistry. This is under the name of Imagine Transforming a Child Scar After Trauma into a Joyful Smile with Three Simple Cuts. Uh, thank you uh, for your appearance today. Uh, and please begin your lecture. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, committee, for introducing us. Uh, Thank you everybody for attending. I wish this would be a joyful lecture as it was for me and Dr. Muhammad in actually preparing. And I wish that you uh, forgive everybody here for the terrible air conditioning and for the late start. But my understanding is that we are going to take our full hour. Okay. I am Dr. Ayman Daneri, and I got my teaching in the Faculty of Dentistry. Actually, I've been teaching there for over 20 years now. I got my PhD from there. But I'm mainly concerned right now more with the clinical practice. I love ceramics. I love dealing with ceramics, and I have my mini lab. I do my personal work, and I even do a little bit of jewelry. And I present it to my wife. And this is actually the first lecture that my wife is attending, and so it's very, very, very important for me. Finally, my four-year-old young old daughter, young daughter gave us the chance to do that. Thank you. Uh, okay, my name is uh, Mohammed Salah, but I'm not Mu Salah. <laughs> we have uh, similarity in the name, but we have different specialty. I am a dentist for a long time. My work was limited for uh, root canal treatment, broken fiber treatment, preparation management, calcified canal. But day by day, my concern increased about the coronal situation. Actually, we are dealing with coronal part of the tooth and the radicular part of the tooth. But actually, in the end, it is one fragment. We don't deal with different sites. So today, our lecture will be about a very important and ridiculous issue, which is trauma. Trauma has a multiple impact upon the parents and upon the psychology of the patient. So Dr. Ayman will continue the introduction about the lecture. I've been working. Here's <laughs> start playing with the mic until it works. Uh, are we going to switch off the lights, please? Yes, please. So I've been working with Hamad for a long time right now, and uh, we have developed great skills in the practice because we work together. And we've done this before actually in the pan Arab conference last year and uh, I personally learned a lot from Dr. Muhammad. I became a better dentist because I worked with him and we both become better dentists because we come here and present our mistakes to you guys. And what we love to do is that share these mistakes and share the good images too, so that we both learn together. And actually, this was one of the greatest experiences to show that sometimes one is not enough. Sometimes you need to look at both sides of the brain, just as Dr. Mahmoud said, and look at cases in slightly different ways. Now, let us start with our celebrities, let's call them. These are our kids. These are the joy of every parent's life. And when the moment comes, when this kid is stressed or crying, you would love 
to drop everything you have and sacrifice everything for them to laugh again. But sometimes they don't understand. They need to grow and develop and start to get a better understanding of what's good for them and what's best for them. But ultimately, the parents think about three things. Love, time, and sacrifice. These three abstractions, they ultimately touch every parent's lives. We do everything for our children. We give up everything for our children. Now this is a case I just got two days ago. It's an emergency case, and this patient is a 13-year-old, although he was actually taller and huger than me. And he was playing with a hover cover or something like that, and he fell, slammed into the pavement. He broke his tooth. But he had one fragment. And so I was just, I put the fragment, and I started looking at the case, and I started talking. I felt that this kid was old enough. And I started talking about how are we going to reattach the fragment? How are we going to rebuild with composite the other tooth? And then I just noticed that he started bursting into tears. And then I stopped. I just, I, I just stopped talking. His mom embraced him and she told me I will do anything to get his teeth back. Everything we do for our kids is out of love. We would love to burn ourselves so that we get that moment and we make every moment in their lives a laughing moment. So love, time, and sacrifice. Let us start from there. Actually, the best moment in their life is when they play. But unfortunately, life is not fair. The prevalence of dental trauma is very high, especially between the period of 6 years and 13. Also, the prevalence of dental trauma is very high in high school in comparison to preschool. But I would love to emphasize about the percentage and the prevalence of the secondary trauma is very high. It is about 25. So the patient who had a previous trauma has a greater opportunity to get the second one. Okay, let's start our different scenarios from the easier one to the tougher one. For this case, we have a beautiful girl with failed two previous attempts with direct resin composite restoration. But her mom still insists to preserve the tooth integrity of this tooth with minimally invasive treatment to blood. So we are going to do again resin composite restoration. If we have a look at this picture, it seems it is very easy and simple treatment to blood. But actually, if we look and focus on the lipping one, we have a rich anatomy, we have a prominent mammalot. With this lateral side of view, we can collect multiple and valuable information about the surface picture. We have vertical groove, we have horizontal preclimata, we have a multiple macro and micro anatomy, which is make it not an easy to reproduce all these surface pictures. Let us think about what is the cause and the factors that affect and lead to the previous, uh, previous failure. So what about, does it traumatic occlusion? What about overbite? What about overjet? So all these factors should be considered in this situation. Okay, what is the most meticulous and very important step in the aesthetic restoration, which is color detection and color reproduction. So in a very fast and very simple manner, you can take just monochromatic picture or black and white picture depending on the value. With the value, it is very easy to detect and distinguish between the lighter shade and the darker one. Okay, what do you think which is more easy for you? Wax up with wax or with composite? 
For me, it is very easy to use a composite in the uh, cast. Just I am caring and focusing about the palatal side, not on the labial side. So I am insist to put this picture in this lecture to show all of you how it is the labial surface is not homogeneous, is not uh, polished, because I am, don't care about the labial surface, my concern only about the palatal surface. Let's talk about index. We should and we recommend using glide with silicon index to, co to collect and uh, uh, record uh, all the fine details. In addition, the amount of the silicon should be a little bit uh, minimally, uh, like a fingertip, to avoid the incomplete adaptation of silicon index in the existence of rubber dam. Rubber dam is a necessary step during our work. So, from this picture, we can evaluate our enamel palatal shell. The thickness of enamel palatal shell can be verified by the shell of the background. Also, the thickness of enamel palatal shell affects the thickness in the later on steps of the dentin. Also, we can regain from this uh, picture the outline and the form of the tooth. The most important thing in this step is that the enamel palatal shell should be homogeneous and avoid any cracks or voids. Later on, we finish the uh, vertical layering. We put dentin, cover completely with enamel layer. We going through uh, reproduction of the mammals without any polishing. Medium post-op to show off how is the dehydration affect the color mismatch. After rehydration, now the tooth regain its original color, and now I can confirm and verify that my color of the aesthetic restoration is mimic to the natural one. After polishing, it is obviously that the horizontal pre matter is obvious. I have vertical groove, so me and my patient is very happy and I will love this smile. Okay, let's raise the bar of the complication for another scenario. We have a huge missing of a uh, two central incisor. Although this bad story, this guy still have a smile. I don't know, he was, don't care about uh, uh, the trauma, about his teeth, but his mom was interested to regain his smile again. Okay, one of the most mandatory steps, which is pre-operative re, uh, pre radiographic picture to check apical closure, to exclude any horizontal root fracture, to avoid or check bulbar involvement. Okay, if everything is uh, good. So we should learn in this uh, case how to detect the color of the enamel separately and then in separately. In this case, I don't use what is commonly used uh, about composite bottom. Here I just take a little bit of enamel shape of composite restoration. In comparison to the natural one, and depending on the value, it is very easy to detect the mismatch and the harmony between the cut. Let's take the benefit about the fraction. When we have a fraction tooth, we have horizontal TS. So I can, from this occlusal view, detect the main core and the main color of the tooth depending on the natural dentin. Another question, what about the extension of the bevel? Actually, it mainly depending on the amount of missing tooth structure. Also, I usually using a uh, red stone to avoid uh, cracks which is can occur in the enamel breath, followed by a pressure disc to giving infinite bevel in the end lead to harmonization in the restriction. We can see this infinite bevel here. 
one of the most critical situation during vertical layering technique, which is thickness of each layer, thickness of dentin and thickness of enamel. If we go, if we make more thicker uh, dentin layer, it will lead to more opaque restoration. And if we have more thicker enamel layer, we have a great discoloration. So from this lateral view, I can measure the proper thickness for each uh, layer without any complication. <coughs> now we are going to cure it. My old technique was using Tofumire matrix band to regain the proximal contact. It was like acrobat play. You put the uh, Tofumire matrix from the different one and pull, pull out it from the affected one. Now with multiple facilities like Unica or sectional matrices, life has become more easier to regain the proximal wall. Yes, we did it again. We regained the beautiful smile. And this is the impact of our work on the psychology of our patient that the smile comes from the heart. Let's talk a little bit about literature. When we're talking about interior composites, look through the literature and the serviceability of the composites. We all understand that the failure rate of composites are relatively higher than indirect restorations. Of course, I'm a prosthodontist, so I'm biased. But when we look at this case, this is a 17-year-old female. She had her trauma years ago, six, seven years ago, something like that. And she came to me because she hated her anterior teeth, and she hated the smile. She hated the fact that her color, or the color of the teeth, is starting to stain. She hated the fact that the two centrals are not similar to each other. They're not a mirror image. And she was questioning whether can we do something better. And when we look at the occlusal view, we can understand that this is an endodontically treated tooth, and even probably there was a little bit of mobility, and the previous dentist left the uh, uh, the wire over there for stability. Another thing that she commented on was the protrusion of the anterior teeth. Now, when we think about endodontically treated anteriors with loss of sound tooth structure, we have to consider that this is the main factor for the serviceability and success of the tooth. And various amount of literature is present to state that the greater the amount of destruction, then here you need to put a fiber post because this raises the fracture resistance and increases the surface of the tooth. So we come back to the question, why hasn't this tooth been crammed before? Well, I said that our patient told me that she had her trauma six years ago. She was probably 11 at that age. And my understanding from many comments that I get from my candidates that they say that at college, the university, we learn not to crown pedodontic teeth. So I ask the question, why? And the answers are somewhere around these. Well, there's a little bit of growth that's going to go on until the years of 14 or 16 of age. And with the growth, the tooth is going to move, and the gingival position is going to move. Also, there's a PFM restoration, and this PFM restoration has a metallic margin, and so it will be exposed. It won't be aesthetic anymore two, three years. And we've got to get, we're going to get a lot of weakening in the pre cervical dentin, because we're going to prepare this tooth for one and a half, or 1.2 at least millimeters. Well, when I get these answers, I start saying, okay, well, number one, who's using anterior PFMs anymore? Who needs the 1.5 millimeter finish line anymore? We're using ceramics right now. These are bonded restorations. They're highly aesthetic. So even if the tooth moves, I'm not going to get a distinction between the end of my ceramic and the root structure. And number two, why not prepare a 0.3 millimeter finish line? 
all throughout the Quran preparation. And over that, you make your temporary. And the temporary phase is the phase where the patient loves you. Because at that specific phase, you can show the patient the end result. She can visualize the end result. And she can see that in my first mock-up, I placed a lot of tertiary anatomy, which most probably she doesn't have in the rest of her teeth. So she didn't like that. So she restarted softening, working on the temporaries, until she got a satisfaction for the protrusion, for the mimicking of the two centrals next to each other, and for the tertiary anatomy. And you continue with your ceramics, and in this specific case, because you have a dark abutment, you use a medium opacity core. And that medium opacity core, when you seed it in place, you then go for the layering technique with your technician. The important part here is that to learn is that you have to guide your technician. They can do that. They can deliver restorations like that 0.5 millimeter thickness. So let's go back to the three problems. The gingiva is going to move. Well, when this gingiva moves, if it moves, if I've done this six years ago, it's going to be aesthetic. I can tell you. PFM restoration, metal margin is going to appear. There's no metal in here. The pre-cervical dentin, there's not enough dentin. You're going to prepare 1.5 millimeters. I just did a 0.3 millimeter preparation, and this restoration is bonded. The only complication that will occur in a bonded restoration in 10 years plus time, and that's a good success rate, is that it's going to debond. Okay? Stick in your adhesive and rebound it again. Okay, let's me asking a question. What if we have the fact? What is the best way to behave with the fact? Okay. This case is very special for me. We have a different scenarios and multiple issues in this case. But the most different in this case, the mom of this cat. She was very smart. After uh, the circumstances for this case uh, was about a pike hiding, then this cat tumbled over the pavement and suddenly he lost his teeth. So his mom collected all the fragments on the ground, then she made a smart call asking what should I do with the fragment. So the answer, please keep this fragment in water to prevent dehydration. Dehydration affects the fragment in multiple ways. Number one, it decreases the fracture resistance. Number two, dehydration leads to collagen collapse. Collagen collapse prevents the penetration of the monomer of adhesive. Number three, prolonged dehydration affects the end result of aesthetics. So when I preserve the fragment in the water, it is give me better prognosis. Let me uh, tell, uh, tell uh, all of you the advantage of uh, fragment reattachment. It is very easy way, very economic, less uh, time on the dental chair, and for psychology, you feel comfort when you regain the original part of the tooth. Okay, from this front of view, we can detect the severity of the case, but from the closer view, we can verify there is no any bulbar involvement. Thank God for this uh, opportunity. So, we have multiple questions with fragment reattachment. All of us have all this. Uh, all of us have this question. Number one: Should I bevel or not? Should I heat the composite? Which kind of composite should I use? It flower composite, backable composite, and if it is backable composite, which type? Enamel, dentin, body. Okay. What about the polymerization of adhesive before cementation, after cementation? What about the removal of the excess? Does it affect the final result? Yeah. We will answer every question of this matter. For the beveling, for the fragment, to the structure, it is very debatable issue. And we have two schools. 
One of them prefer making bubbling, it increases the surface area, and they claim it giving more predictability and longevity for the final result. On the other hand, some of clinicians uh, found there is no any significant difference. But it's the main issue that I would like to emphasize about it, that the bevel disturbs the exact adaptation of the fragment. So during the adaptation, I need to have some guidance when I reattach the fragment again. Okay? What about selective edge? I'm mainly concerned about etching for enamel, not for dentin, to preserve the main mineral integrity for dentin. Especially under magnification, color matching is a repeated uh, step. So, Mainly during rubber dam application in the upper anterior zone, the upper lip mainly prevents the accurate inversion for the upper anterior teeth. So we can uh, have a trick in this uh, technique of rubber dam application, double frame. Double frame gives me higher opportunity to have ligation with dental floss knot with more interaction. Okay, it is a matter of discussion. Should I polymerize the adhesive before cementation or after that? The ideal answer for this uh, question it depends mainly on the thickness of adhesive. With thinner thickness of adhesive, you can polymerize first and then cement. But if you are afraid to have incorrect uh, mistake during uh, reattachment and ad adaptation, the recommendation delay the polymerization of adhesive. But in my point of view, I don't prefer that. I prefer first polymerization, then cementation, because I mainly depending on the adhesion process. Okay, what about removal of excess? Does it matter? Yeah. Under rubber dam and with uh, magnification, it is very easy to remove all the excess with a scalpel, with a scaler, or with carrier, as it, this uh, excess prevents the rehydration. As we know that uh, enamel is uh, permeable, so with this excess it prevents the rehydration again and regains the main color of the tooth. As we can see here, in media post-operative, I can distinguish the fracture line and the, mit, the mismatch between the fragment and the original tooth structure, but after rehydration and after rebuild of the neighboring one, we have the real and uh, harmony in the color matching between the fragment and the tooth structure. Before and after, after fragment reattachment, after rebuilding. Again, again, we did it, and uh, the kid was uh, very happy. But the most repeatable question: Does it work? And what about the follow-up and longevity of the reattachment? According to evidence-based and review of literature, there is some cases follow-up up to nine years old with satisfactory result. This kid had bad luck. He exposed again for second throw. Yes. <laughs> okay. Don't be afraid about the fragment. Don't be afraid about the uh, composite. Everything is okay, but the right central got periodical abscess. Okay. Let's take pre-operative radiographic picture. Oops. We have widening in periodontal membrane space. We have widening uh, laminar dura. So please go in for a scan. What is a complete bone loss for labial cortical plate for the right center in comparison to the neighboring one? So the most logical question now: Does this tooth flex it or mobile? Okay. Actually, it is not, because we have only one wall is missed, which is the labial uh, plated bone, but the proximal walls of mesial and distal bone still exist, 
but at the role it still exists. So my management here should be about stop this resorption cycle. Also, I would like to show all of you the verification with Compim CT, the attachment and the exact adaptation of the fragment with the original tooth structure. So, to stop this uh, resorption cycle, I have to uh, start root canal treatment. Now the question, where can I start access cavity and the size of the access cavity? This is a very important question. Now we have fragment attachment, and if I am going through uh, traditional access cavity, I will lose and sacrifice more to the structure, and the attachment will be uh, very fragile and I lose. So I don't promote for limited and contracted access cavity, but in this case, I have to have minimally invasive and to preserve the tooth integrity in this situation. Also, I know the limitation and disadvantage of limited contracted access cavity. It needs higher skill level, we need higher magnification, we need uh, special tools, special for endodontic files. As we can see here, it is very minimally and very limited access cavity beyond the level of the attachment. Now, we are using uh, soft files like blue files of Fanta it can be bending very well without any stresses. Now, biomechanical priming uh, in up and down motion without any interface to avoid further mobility of the tooth. Now, I remove all the dead and necrotic tissue. We can see also the extrusion of the bus, which is mean acidic media. Acidic media mainly stimulates the osteoclast and the macrophage to give more resorption of the bone. Now, I have a very proper space for my irrigant, for my intracanal medicament. We use calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is highly alkaline, elevated pH, and you can stop the direct and the indirect effect of osteoclast and macrophage. Another stressful condition, especially this is a girl, she is not a boy, so uh, she was very scared about uh, this uh, end of trauma. Also, her father has multiple words multiple words about the future of her of his kid. How well she will how well she face the society, how well she deal with her friend. So his request, please do anything to regain back my daughter's smile. I promise him I will do best of my best. Actually this is the primary situation. We have complicated crown fluid fracture with large bulb exposure. The most worst thing in this situation was the time elapsed. It was 48 hours between the management. So what should you do in this case? But the most uh, good news in this case is that this patient had the fracture. Okay. Depending on uh, pre-operative geographic picture, we can check apical closure, yeah, we have apical closure, we have a good crown root ratio. What about dentine thickness? It seems good. Okay, after 48 hours, I guess I have a huge contamination in case like that. But the management of this case has two side view. Preservation of bulbar vitality and attachment, uh, reattachment of the fat. So, if I preserve bulbar vitality, I will gain more thicker radicular dent. But guess what? If I have failed vital bulb therapy, I have to re entry again and make root canal treatment. So, with the second re entry, I will lose more uh, tooth structure. The attachment uh, of the fragment will be very fragile, very fragile, so I will lose the main advantage of reattachment. So my decision was to do root canal treatment, 
depending on three important factors, exposure size, degree of contamination, time elapsed since the treatment plan. Good canal treatment done under uh, rubber dam application. And this is post-operative radiographic picture. After this case, I posted on the social media and I got multiple criticism about I losing the vital uh, vitality of the tooth. But I got, uh, I respect all other uh, opinion, but I got multiple wrong information. Some of them uh, advised me you can do vital bulb therapy even though after 14 days. And another one giving me advice, you can go to do vital bulb therapy after 40 days. Yeah, does it logic? So I'm searching again and uh, uh, going back to the uh, review of literature, the maximum period that can be delayed for the treatment was seven days and nowadays it's nine days. There is no 14, there is no 40, okay? So Facebook sometimes misleads for you. So the uh, home message here, if you have incomplete bulb closure or open apex with in this case, we have a closed apex. If we have larger than pinpoint, but we have larger, in this case, exposure, you can go into pulpotomy. So there is no exact time for partial pulpotomy and the sooner and faster treatment plan giving you better prognosis. After we finished the radicular part, let's go to the coronal part. Here I am going to reattach the fragment with body shade, body shade giving you more fillers than uh, a flower composite. I prefer using body shade because body shade is a mix between light and dentin, so the body shade is perfect in this situation. Value for detection and verification, rubber dam with dental floss for more retraction, one of the most important things during reattachment, the application and the holding of the fragment. How you can hold the fragment with this uh, simple trick. You can use bond brush, load upon it floral composite, attach it to the fragment, then curing. I, now, I am now and have handle like for laminate adaptation and cementation. Curing. Removal of the invisible excess. After rehydration, I get gave again the previous situation and my patient leave my office with uh, functional tools and regain back her smile in one session. Pre-operative radiographic, uh, post-operative radiographic picture, it is a confirmatory for the assessment of the exact adaptation of the fact. I am in love with this smile, we are struggling for this smile. Now we have a very meticulous situation. In this case, it is not a matter about the fracture, it is not a matter about the bulb exposure, but it is the main concern in this case about the open apex. In this case, we have open apex, we have uh, thinner dentino walls, so my concern should be about preservation of the bulb. The vitality is very important in this case. So I am going for partial cystic pulpotomy under rubber dam application. In this case, you can use MTA. But we have to know that MTA have a great discoloration, even though white MTA. So I recommend don't use any MTA with basmous oxide in the anterior zone. You can shift it to any type of MTA have zirconia oxide to avoid this gauge discoloration. Now we are going for follow-up, two years follow-up, 2016 to 2018 we have maturation for the apex, 
We have a bigger closure, we have thinner dentin walls. Okay, let's take you back to prosthodontics, the other side of the brain. For the past 20 years I've been working in my private practice, I've learned that practice management is very important. We are dealing with patients, and these patients, they're human beings. They have a life. This young kid was a 14-year-old. He trains, he's an athlete, who plays water polo, and he was presented to me this situation and endodontically treated upper centrals after two weeks of the accident. He remained two weeks like that. He was fine. He didn't go to training for two weeks. He didn't see his fans for two weeks. He didn't go to school for two weeks. But his mother, she was highly distressed. And the most important factor that brought her to my clinic was bringing the tooth back. It's fine that the tooth is not mobile. It's fine that we save the biological aspect of the tooth. But she wanted the tooth back. And definitely he wanted the tooth back too. Even if usually boys, as Hamlet's patient, they don't care. But when they grow up, they develop. And these things start to become very important. And so here, temporization is very important. Why not, in my learning experience, I learned, why not take an impression and pour it with fast set stone? And even though Dr. Mohammed prefers composites, I have my own lab, of course, I do the wax-ups easily. It doesn't differ, composite or wax-up. But you can bring this tooth back to the normal form in anatomy. And then index this cast, place an edge file in the endodontically treated tooth, put some temporary crown material in your index, and voila. This was my first visit. And you know what? The kid loved The kid loved the clinic. And for practice management aspect, you've won these patients. You've won their parents. You've won their whole family to your clinic. Because you gave them what they need. You sacrificed your time in an emergency visit and gave them a tooth that they loved. And continuing this case, actually, you will understand and see from the photographs that photography is the best teacher. Why? Because I went, of course, for post and core for this tooth and crowning with a minimally invasive preparation. But what do you think about the temporary crown that has been done? I believe that this is worse than this scenario. You know what? The kid loved it. And then you go for impressioning and send it to the lab, or if you have a mini lab, you do it yourself, and you bring the ceramic crown. And I felt at the beginning that this crown was a little bit darker. But you know what? The kid loved it. He wanted to just cement it and go home. But I put it in a little bit brighter shade, and the mom was okay with that. She was fine with this crown. But when you go with photography to the macro anatomy and the one-to-one -one image, you can understand that here the perichymata was not very well developed in my restoration. That's a defect. I learned from my work. We should all learn from our work. But the important factor here is that the kid and his parents, they both loved it. Let's talk about Females. This patient was a young female, 15 year old. She got her first, she got her trauma four years back from her sister, and this tooth was again endodontically treated, and she received the composite restoration. Four years back, she was 11. 
Again, I guess the dentist thought that gingiva, PFM, margin exposure are factors to go away or shift away from direct, indirect restorations. But this specific female, 15 year old, she was distressed. And the amount of distress she placed on her mother was huge. And I guess females here can understand the emotional factor. She hated her teeth. Any of you who had seen Dr. Mahmoud's presentation, she placed her hand on her mouth every time she was talking. She hated her teeth. Why? Because when we look at the closer look, this central doesn't mimic the first one. That's number one, four. Number two, the color and the shape is horrible. I don't know, I don't know whether it was like that four years ago, or the composite started staining. I don't know, but it's horrible. She's gotta hate this too. So, the first visit for a cast, make your wax up for your composite, and bring her a proper temporary restoration that she can live with that she can start interacting with the society. She can start to laugh again. She can start to be happy again. And this will reduce the amount of distress for her parents. You are sacrificing your time in the emergency visit to gain their love. And in this specific scenario, I didn't know what type of restoration I'm gonna do finally. I was just doing a quick emergency visit. And so the only amount of preparation I did was just remove this terrible composite and make 0.2 millimeter finish line, no more. And therefore, because this restoration was not bonded, this is a 10 year restoration, and it has very thin margin, it broke in four days. And she called back. The restoration broke, but I'm happy. I'm gonna come in the regular business. The important factor here, how much preparation do we need to do? Why not go for something called crown near preparation? What's a crown near preparation? This comes from a crown and a veneer. In a veneer, we make a 0.3 millimeter finish line, sometimes even less, sometimes even preference. Yes? And in a crown, we make a palatal involved. And in this specific case, this was an endotreated endo tube. So we had to put the post and core, fiber post and cores and core material. But because I can save the proximal contacts, and because I have to wrap palatally to cover the palatal composite of the endodontic restoration, I don't need to remove my contacts. Preserve your enamel. Preserve the tooth structure. Preserve the pre-cervical dentin. Well, how are you going to do that? What type of material? Ceramics. They're glass ceramics. They're bonded ceramics. So what's going to happen? Actually, we started 10.29, so we've got 15 more minutes. We'll rush it a little bit. So we preserve the proximal context. I tell you by my experience, I've done this several times, and you know what? The more sound tooth structure you preserve, the easier the impressioning technique, the easier the lab work, the easier the cementation, and the greater the surface. And the easier the aesthetics. And this is where you stop palatally. You say the whole Singular. Isn't this the most difficult part in the preparation of the anterior tooth? Don't do it. Sometimes when I talk about the crown ear preparation, candidates just start asking me, well, this needs a skilled technician. Actually, it does. The crown needs a more skilled technician. Because you're going into more surfaces and into more views <coughs> to see the preparations. And then you do your wax ups. And here, I recommend that you follow and guide your laboratory technician. Have a look at their wax ups. Check that the form of the anterior tooth greatly copies and mimics the neighboring tooth. 
because that's the first thing her eye is going to perceive. And then you press this in ceramics. And here's another thing. Now this patient, she was an A1 patient shape. Never press the same shape. Press a lighter shape. And why is that? Well, because when you press a lighter shape, it's much easier for the technician to darken the color rather than lighten it up. If I'm going to darken the color, as we're going to see here in the rest of the pictures, I can do it with simple staining technique. But to raise the value and to make it brighter, I need to remove from the ceramic and replace opal porcelain. This is more difficult. You stain and you glaze and you check the form. And this is a very nice way to actually check the line angles, where they are. You use the alam al ahmad al azraq You stain and glaze and go for the first try inside the patient's mouth. And when you look at this photo, because macro photography just improves everything, this patient, she loved this crown. But yet again, with loops and with the photograph, I can identify that it's a little bit brighter. Okay? At hand, put a little bit of stains and finalize the case. And this is her spine. She was happy. She was in love with the clinic. And you know what's more important? Her mother. Her mother felt secure. Her mother knew when she looked at this restoration, this crown here, just before cementation, she knew that her daughter's nagging is gonna stop, that she's gonna smile again. Now, our last chapter. Oh, okay. Now it is uh, uh, our last chapter in this lecture about unfavorable tone. Actually, trauma is not committed for the coronal part only, but it also can affect the radicular part of the toes. Mainly, I would love to stress about horizontal root fraction. This unfavorable uh, trauma, and this, this is very odd and weird uh, case, my partner, Dr. Ayman, advised me, please don't put this case in our lecture because it has multiple debates. And this guy has a bad luck. He had two trauma with two fractures, one on the coronal part, as we can see here, the gingival level is not equivalent for the neighboring one and the first one. The open photographic picture shows horizontal root fracture, so CBCT is mandatory in this case. Oh my god. What I can see here in the sagittal section that the two parts is not in the same plane. So what should I do in this case? I would love to stress that uh, horizontal root fracture is a mandatory and it is not luxurious to request scan. Unfortunately, we don't have this, uh, a lot of time to uh, to discuss about horizontal root fracture. Maybe in next lecture. But if we are going to uh, review of literature, the management of horizontal root fracture is mandatory in the diagnosis with combing CT. I would love to share with all of you this is systematic management and the procedures for combing CT. If I have horizontal root fracture, especially in the middle third of the root, I have to make CBCT. If I don't have this fracture, I have to take multiple periodical radiograph with different angulation because we have 2D, not 3D as in CBCT. In the end, I am uh, in love and it's very uh, amazing and lovely companion with all of you. Our target was to preserve and regain the smile of our kids and our patients. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Ayman. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad, for this nice presentation. And uh, we will uh, go. Uh, what's the principle for you? And the last one. We already about that. Regarding both.
Okay, yes. Uh, exactly the main concern about this uh, situation was the preservation of the bone intake. And uh, there is uh, multiple debates between the clinicians. Some of them recommend removal the coronal part and to preserve the apical part. And the other recommend uh, preserve the coronal part and the removal of the apical part. Actually, in this case, we have to preserve the coronal part to preserve the vacuolingual dimension. Okay? Especially this part of tooth have uh, still fixed and not mobile because I have a one lost lingual and battery, but the proximal wall is still empty. So the recommendation for this treatment plan just to preserve the coronal part put bioceramic material like MTA, uh, bioceramic, uh, biodentin, and the apical part, we have to remove it because we have very apical inducement and infection for the apical part, and the graft it with xenograft to give a long chance for uh, replacement with xenograft, and when it's grown to 20, we can put it. Okay. Thank you. Okay.